Hey everyone. So first things first, this is not going to be just a regular how to video. It's more of a how I did it video. Um, because there's always been a question on forums and, and uh, videos on YouTube of can you convert an older CCFL backlit TV to LED? And the answer is, well, yeah, sort of. There's a lot of work that goes into it, and many would think it's just not worth it. I myself probably won't do another one of these. So here's the story. The backlight in this TV died during a time when I really couldn't afford to just run out and you know buy a new TV. So I used what I had laying around and got it working again. I'm going to show you how I did it, but, but keep in mind, this was done on the fly very quickly with the parts I had laying around, so it's not perfect. Since I was in a pinch, I just decided to try and use LED tape. You can get spools of this stuff dirt cheap on Amazon and other places. You'll notice the fan screwed to the back of the case. Keep that in mind. I'll, I'll get back to that later. Now, recently something else broke, and I just wound up buying a new TV. I'll probably fix this one later on, so I'll hang on to it and just keep it as a spare. But for right now, let's just get on with the video. The first thing I had to do was get the LCD panel apart. To do that, I had to remove the front panel, which was pretty easy. You just remove the screws holding it on and, you know, any wires running between it and, um, you know, the panel buttons or speakers. Once that's off, um, I remove the metal frame that holds the LCD panel together. You have to disconnect the ribbon cables from the T-Con board and just pretty much lift the panel out. If you ever do this, keep in mind the LCD panel is extremely fragile and when you remove it, try not to let it flex or it could crack and make sure you store it in a, you know, a safe place. Now that the LCD panel's out, you can see the light diffusers. They gotta go too. Again, if you're doing this, store them in a safe place and don't bend them or get them dirty. You can actually see the LED strips that I installed behind them. So here's a picture of what the TV looked like originally. You can see the CCFL tubes that were mounted behind the diffusers. You can also see how some of them have gone bad. These all had to go, as well as any mounting hardware. Now you can buy new tubes, but they're extremely fragile. And the last time I checked, I think they were about 20 to $30 per tube if you order them online. So yeah, it's just, it can get expensive quick, especially if you need about a dozen or more of them. After removing all of that, I stuck the LED strips in. Originally it worked, but as you can see, even with the diffusers in place, there's def definite dark spots and lines. So I had to add more strips. This worked pretty well. So now on to how to power the strips. I didn't want to have to run a separate power supply or, or power switch for the backlight. I wanted it to turn on with the TV like the original backlight did. The original backlight circuit ran 24 volts DC to a couple of inverter boards, which boosted the voltage up to ignite and run the backlights. I removed the DC power line to that and powered the strips using that. The problem was they were 12 volt strips. So I just used a 7812 linear regulator tied to a MOSFET to bring the voltage down to 12 volts. That's what the fan and the heat sink are for uh, because it gets pretty warm. There's also a 7809 regulator in there, which runs the fan. It's a 12 volt fan, so it does run it at a slower speed. It's just enough to keep air flowing through the case. That, that way I don't have to listen to a fan whirring, you know, the entire time. There were a couple problems that had to be worked out. One is that most TVs will shut back down if it detects any problems whatsoever with the backlight circuits. I got lucky and my TV just worked, even with the original backlight circuits missing. However, others you may have to fold into thinking that, you know, everything's okay. The other issue is with the color temperature of the LEDs compared to the original CCFLs. The LEDs that I installed were a lower color temp, so the image appeared much warmer. I found a way to get into the service menu and was able to change the white balance. I did this by eye and I got it pretty close. So as you can see, it didn't look all that bad once it was all said and done with. The backlight turned on and off with the TV just like normal. The other issue is uh, I can't really dim the backlight, which is not a big deal because it's, for me, perfect right, right where it's at. But uh, if you did want to do that, you'd have to find the PWM signal um, that the, the controller, the TV, sends out to the backlight circuit and then uh, maybe send that to like a transistor or something, uh, the base of a transistor, and have it switch the backlight on or off. So would I do this again? Probably not. It sounded pretty easy, but it was a royal pain in the butt getting the screen apart without breaking it and having to do it multiple times. So anyways, I hope this wasn't too boring and uh, I have more proper videos coming soon. Just I've been really busy with work lately and I haven't really been able to make any. Um, I still have to work on those Genesis and uh, do the, some AV mods and uh, I have one that I have ready to go. I want to overclock it and see uh, how stable it is. That's about it. So I will see you later. Bye-bye.